Hi and welcome to another edition of The Tracker. This time we are going globe trotting and we are going all the way to Scandinavia. We are going to be talking to a man whom Ghanaians haven't heard of for a long, long time. But guess what? It's World Cup season in the air, so we might as well catch up with some of these people. Razak Pimpong. Yes, that's the man we'll be talking to on The Tracker today. He uh, will be joining us all the way from his base in Denmark. He'll be telling us exactly what he's been up to um, off the pitch, on the pitch, and everything interesting about his life. So this should be quite an interesting conversation. Stay with us here on The Tracker. When we come back, we'll get into the conversation with Razak. Okay, so Razak, um, thank you very much for joining us on this interview on the tracker. What have you been up to? Because I feel like Ghanaians haven't heard from you in such a long time. Where have you been hiding and what's been going on in Razak Pimpon's life? Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm living in Denmark uh, after my career. I've been here and um, I've been into coaching and uh, I, have my, uh, I have my career that I'm uh, working on now in Denmark. Hmm. Talk to me about that a little, right? Um, the decision to, first of all, stay behind in Denmark. What, what informed that decision? Because it looks to me like you spent a lot of your time in Scandinavia generally, but what informed your decision to basically stay in Denmark? Uh, it's because uh, I have a project going on here and uh, that, that keeps me busy to, uh, to make sure that everything is going on well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is uh, that that is uh, one of the uh, the reason why. Is this something you were planning before you retired? Because it's not very often that you hear about players like having set up, let's say, an academy or something of the sort in a foreign country. Walk me through that a little. I mean, your thought process when you were coming towards the end of your career. When did you think about all of that? Uh, I think uh, my last year of my career, I, I had been a, a lot of. I've been having a lot of injuries with my with my groin. So the last years I've been uh, planning what to do uh, after my football career, and uh, that was one of the the, uh, the project that came into my mind. Uh, that if I can give my my knowledge in football um, to the kids mm -hmm. who are benefiting for it, want mm -hmm. to achieve a, a good career, uh, that would be that would be good. So. Mm. And I had a plan before uh, my career ended. Hmm. Talk to me again about how easy or difficult it is to set up something like that. Because we know that, for instance, in Ghana, you probably look for land somewhere or a building somewhere where you can house your, your kids to train them. What's the process like in Denmark? How complicated was it for you to eventually set up and have your academy thing running? Uh, I think it's all about having the... Um, having a good good uh, partnership with the uh, football club mm. uh, and and my my uh, my was uh, I had a, a good uh, partnership with with the school that I work over there and they have all the facilities so in that way it became much easier for me to establish uh, what I want to do mm. uh, with the kids and the, and the football what I want I want to uh, do hmm. Now, tell me about the, the work with the kids itself. How many kids do you um, train so far? What's your, your selection process like? Are you training both boys and girls, or is it just a boys thing? Just give, give us some insights into, into that whole program. Yes, I started, I started with uh, I started 2013. Uh, 2014, I started with, uh, with 14 kids uh, that I hold the football school for. Uh, and uh, now uh, there are over 100 kids that uh, go to this the system. And uh, I've, I've also changed it that I want to implement uh, guests also into it. So now I was started with the guest football school that uh, I'm, uh, I'm on it now, which I also started last year. Uh, they were 25 and this year. Mm -hmm. uh, in, two, in two weeks, we're going to have a football school that they, they are 44. Uh, of them so 
of course, when you start, it, it, when you start everything, when you start, it's a little bit slow. But then when you keep uh, consistency, then you started, it started getting better at, yeah. the, at the end. Yeah. So that is, that's, that's how I did it. And now uh, uh, it's for plan now that, uh, for example, the boys wise is, uh, it's not easy to come in. Uh, whenever I have, I have an event, it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's full that with the waiting list, people yeah. who want to get in. Yeah. So it's all, it's all the hard work that I've been doing that, uh, they have seen that I can really give something to, uh, to the kids. Is, is this um, the situation where when you are training these kids, right? Like you're saying, there's obviously a lot of competition. Have you graduated some of them out of the academy system already? Have some of them joined professional clubs already? Uh, I think, uh, like you said, there's a lot of uh, competition in this, uh, but what, uh, what they, they forget sometimes is that Football is, is is very hard sport, you know. It's it's hard, and um, my way of of getting through when I was in Ghana, mm -hmm. that uh, even though that is hard, we used to we used to have uh, music through it. We used to have dance and fun things that makes it a little bit easier for us, even though that is hard. Uh, and that is what I mean. Plan I'm uh, I'm using in my uh, way of doing things here because. When, when you use the music and the, and the dance and uh, trying to imp, uh, lend them the football through it, it's, it becomes more easier because the one thing that is hard and when everything, everything becomes that hard, hard all the time, then sometimes you give up. You don't want, you don't want any more uh, over here. That's how it is. So the way of doing my things, how to, how to twist it to uh, lend them in a different way mm -hmm. is uh, something that I've done that. Is is a lot. Is have been a success for me that the, the kids would like to to come to the system because they think that it's fun to learn. It's a fun way to learn. Mm. I mean, I, I've seen some of those dance videos and I can definitely testify that it's fun. But wh which of the dancers do they enjoy the most? And um, I mean, how, how much does it help them to connect with you and the entire I mean operation that you are, you are giving out? It helps. It helps a lot. It helps a lot. I would say it helps a lot because. Uh, we all the time start with the, a dance warm up, and uh, when when they comes um, in the in the morning, you know some are tired and you know. But when you start the music and you put a little bit dance and the smile comes out mm -hmm. and uh, they are fresh to train, and, uh, and, and in that way it, it makes it makes them relax uh, and learn what is important in the in, in, the, in the game. Mm. Those, those are very interesting details, and I I, I feel like. Your, your story is very different from the story of a regular Ghanaian athlete or footballer who goes outside. I mean, career is winding down. They take up mm. something of this sort. That just speaks to me about perhaps maybe how seriously you might have taken education. So I just want to take you back a little, back to Ghana. Let's come back to Ghana. And tell me mm. a little bit about your, your childhood and what your education was like and if perhaps that might have fed into the type of life you're you are living now. Uh, I think uh, you know, when I was in Ghana, I went to uh, I, I lived in Jamestown. My okay. father was a policeman in Jamestown, and um, and uh, yes, I went to school a little bit. But uh, the, school, the school was not my uh, yeah, it was not my <laughs> it was not my way to make make it in life. Uh -huh. I, I wanted to play football. That was where my focus was, and I put all the energy there, and. Uh, I learn what I can learn from uh, from from uh, school, but the most of, most of, of my education I had it in football. Sometimes people say that uh, when I remember when I was back at home, they say that football is only for for footballer. Yeah. Football is only for those who doesn't have education. But but football can really give you education if you really that's what really want to. What what is in football? The discipline and everything that is in it. You can you can actually use it. To to to, uh, mm -hmm. to use it in the normal life, yeah, and uh, and, and that is what all what I've learned from football. So when I was Ghana to, yeah. to now, that is what they have educated me, and that is what I use to uh, to uh, to to give it over to those who want to achieve uh, mm. football in mm. in their career. Mm. Now, wait. So, at, at what point did you decide that you know what? Mommy wants me to go to school. Daddy wants me to go to school. But 
I'm done with school. What point was that? Was that JSS? Was that high school? Uh, I, I think I think it was uh, when I finished JSS. I remember that uh, when I was having the JSS, uh, one of one of when we have our last exam examination, mm -hmm. uh, the the one of the policemen who used to live in the barracks where we were living, he was one who was taking care of. Uh, <laughs> Of, of where we have it as a nation, so that this, you know, this YC, YC what's it called? The, the JSS uh, final exam. Mm -hmm. BC. Uh, I forgot it. BC, uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. You know, they have someone to who, to, who, to watch, to take care of uh, mm -hmm. what is going, who's going to cheat and all this, you know. And I remember he, he, he told me that, shit, I can see that you are struggling. He told me, he said, have you seen how you are struggling? When they say you should go to school, you don't want to go. And I, and I told him that, I know, but football is something that I want to do, you mm -hmm. know. And I remember when I came from, uh, I came back from under 17. Uh, he saw me that he, he was shaking his head. He said that they, I told him, right, that it's, mm -hmm. that is what I wanted to do. Yeah. So he was surprised that I, I achieved it. Mm. Uh, but go back to your question. It's like uh, after the GSS, when I when I finished that, then I knew that, okay, I, I'm done. And uh, and I got a scholarship to come to Infantipim to play football. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and no, and it was all about football. So after the GSS, uh, it was done. Mm. So you, did, did you actually yeah. go to advancement? Did you take up that scholarship? Yeah, I, I yeah I took the scholarship, and uh, I was there. And but it was only I, re I remember when when uh, you know we were there to play football. So mm -hmm. when there's a break, when there was a dinner and stuff, they see us. Some of the students see us in the yeah. dinner, you know, they, they look at us like, are, are, you, are you guys here in the school? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can, I, can, I, can relate, I can relate to this because I was at Infantspil myself and I, I knew how the sports, the sports boys, as they were called, were, 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 were looked at back in the mm -hmm. day because you typically wouldn't see them a lot in class. Yeah. But then again, when Intercor and stuff came around, they'd be no. there. So, wait, so, <laughs> wait, so, so, you, so you, did you finish your time exactly. in high school? Did you finish high school in the first one before eventually moving out? No. No, no, I didn't. I did. I think yeah, during that time, then we got the, we got call up because during that time, I was also playing for the under 20s in the uh, Olympics. They had this uh, second team that they played in the Olympics. So, so I, I, during that time, I joined the Olympics and during, during the Olympics time, I got, I got to be called to the 17th national team. Oh, wow. So that was, that was all. That's, that's, so a, that's, a, very, fast. that's a very interesting part. So, <laughs> so I, I believe, so wait, wait, hold on a second. Let's slow down a bit. So I believe yeah. you might have finished your first year. Did you, did you finish your first year? I, I, I almost, <laughs> but I didn't see the classroom. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's that's that's, that's really interesting. Um, <laughs> tell me about the the, the Great yeah. Olympics experience, right? Because you're telling me that you played for Olympics and then through that you were you were selected by the national mm. team. Who was in charge of um, the national team selections at the time, and what was mm. the process like? D did you receive a phone call while you were in school? Did somebody come and see you and try to recruit you? Just walk me through the process of um, the um, time where you were at Olympics and when you were invited to the national team. I think uh, I think at the Olympics time they have this uh, the young players who uh, they call them. Uh, I remember that time they talk, they call us Otogali <laughs> because we were we were the young ones mm -hmm. and uh, the the train the training that we had it was just you see the the first team training that, that was uh, Atram and uh, Nike still there and go and we will be running around the field why they are training you know just running around and if you are lucky that you call you to come and play like five minutes or something like that uh but but we were a lot of young i think we were, we were four or five players from olympics that got we, we got put into the winning bar mm. with the when they were starting to build on the 17. so they put us there and that, that was uh Kuta Tupifi, who was the coach there ah he was coach of olympics uh, then a, a late uh, it was no, he was he was a coach for the under seventeen. Under seventeen, he was the okay. Was, uh, doing the recruitment. Of under seventeen, uh, uh, doing the recruitment there. Yeah. Uh, but the coach, if I can remember, I cannot remember really remember. But I know that the uh, Sapon was also there. Because Sapon was yeah. also living by then. Mm, mm. Uh, so so they, they put us in the under seventeen from the on this Otogali, the, the second team that we used yeah. to 
walk around, play yeah. around. Yeah. So, so if I understand you, you actually never played for the main mm. Olympics team, did you? No, so, no. When 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 I came to camp with the twenties, mm -hmm. then then we sometimes they really they really they release us Fridays to come and train with the first team. So I think I had I had like uh, four games with the with the with Olympics. the first team. So that was in the Ghana Premier League. You played in the Ghana Premier Before League. I went to the seven team. Uh, uh, with, I went to the uh, yeah. So you, so you, so you played at least four matches in the Ghana Premier League. I think I had like four or five games with the Olympics. Ah, interesting. No, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I did like at least four four, four matches. In the mm. yeah. Now, talk to me a bit about how 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 you rated the Ghana Premier League then. And how you see it now? I mean, I, I want to get into some national team conversation, but just your your brief experience with um, club football, which you said was four or five games. What was the experience like for you? Did you think, wow, this is hard? This is not conditions that are conducive. Yeah. Yeah. What was your mind state like when you were playing yeah. the league? I think it was hard. It was very hard because, you know, uh, I always say when I, when I finish when I. You know when I when I came to uh, to Denmark, uh, mm -hmm. when I when I'm home and I'm watching, I'm watching Premier League. I always say that, wow, did I play this league? Because I can see that the tactics that they are doing that league, yeah, it's it's like it's like a, 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 which I understand. So because everyone is playing for their, uh, it's like playing for life. So 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 the it's very very tough to play the Premier League. Mm. Compared to, for example, playing playing Europe, because the hunger in African football is is different story than European football. Mm. Mm. That, that's very you well understood. Yeah, that's very well understood. But again, I mean, mm. you you've lived in Denmark and basically Europe most of your mm. um, adult life and your career. Um, we are still down here. We are, we are grappling with some issues with regards to our local football in the league. What's the one thing that you would love us to improve? Mm. I mean, just from where you are sitting, one thing you would love us to improve about our league football? Uh, I think, you know, I think that, uh, I think they, of course, they have improved a lot since I played there. That, that is for sure. Uh, mm. Now there's a lot of uh, teams that have their own clubhouses, have their own buses, and there's a lot that, that has, uh, are happening. But of course, uh, if, you know, if they have to put more money into it for mm. some of the players that leaves early to stay to to uh, to get more beneficial for the club that they are playing before they leave but in another hand i also understand why they want to leave when they have the chance to come to europe because the economy is not it's not the same you know and uh, and and if you have players that have Okay, salary that they are playing, then I think they would like to stay more. But but I understand the reason why they want to uh, yeah. move on. Mm. Let's, so let's, so mm. it's, uh, it's it's uh, it's about it's it about yeah. No no you 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 you're making a point. Finish your point. Yeah yeah it's it, it's it's about how to keep the the quality players uh, for longer period mm. to to make the to make the league more attractive. Hmm. That, that's well understood. Let, let me let's go back to the national team. Um, again, you've made your first under seventeen team. Um, what was that like for you? Because in the beginning, you always told everybody that you wanted to go to, uh, you wanted to play football instead of going to school. Now you've been introduced to national team football. What's it like when you arrive in camp first of all in the under seventeen um, training camp? What's that like? Uh, that is a. <laughs> The hunger was uh, was was big. Uh, I remember that uh, you know, I came to camp where we have the Guanty, we have ECN, we have, you know, we have a lot of good good players. I can mention and mention, yeah. and uh, we are a lot of players. It's you know, <laughs> you have not been easy. You have yeah. not been easy. It's uh, when when you come to camp and you you are you are like hundred players in camp, then you you ask yourself. How can I go through it to be the the, the final system of uh, final twenty three or whatever? Mm -hmm. But uh, but hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, and dedication is always is always the key to success. Because 
I, I, if I can remember the trainings that we had on a 17, it's a train, some trainings that sometimes there's so many talents. You know, I know the talents in Ghana is mm -hmm. massive. Mm -hmm. So, so it became something I feel like it becomes like mentality. You know, those who are tough men mentality mm -hmm. can, can have a sport. Yeah. Because the training that we, we had, we have a, sometimes we have a good training in the pitch. Sometimes they take us with a bus, go to Winneba, let us run, run a lot mm -hmm. in the pitch. And after, you will feel like you're going to pick you with a bus home <laughs> again. But uh, then they end up so okay, you have to run back home. <laughs> you know, so, so, so it's a, you know, there are some things that uh, it makes it makes it like sometimes we will wake up in the morning. The next day, maybe some of some of the players are vanished mm -hmm. from camp. They have taken their bag and gone because they they could not take it. It's uh, and we, in a way which I understand because when you have so many talents, it's not, it's not easy. Mm. It's, it's not easy. But uh, but again, with, uh, with 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 hard work and uh, good mentality, yeah. you, you can you can really far. Now I, I remember that you progressed to the under twenty stage. You were you were promoted to the under twenty level, if that's right. And um, I mean, you 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 guys had some tournaments to play. Tell me about your your fondest memories or the things you remember most with that under twenty team. Can you say it again? You were you were gone by the try to oh, say it. Again. I'm I'm saying that you were you, you were promoted from under 17 to under 20. Tell us about some of mm. your fondest memories with that under 20 team. What do you remember most when you cast your mind back to that team? This was one of the best period in our career. Uh, I've all the time said that uh, when you played on a 17, you always have to work hard to be able to get a contract outside because when you get a contract outside and you are playing, it makes it more easier for you to come to the under 20. Then you come back as a professional. Mm -hmm. uh, and the the group that we, we, we were in that under 20 team, the, the togetherness, the, the fun that we have together, it was like a family. So whenever we are... That's we are the SCN, going to, Derek Boatin. Yeah, yeah Derek yeah. Boatin, SCN, Razak, Ibrahim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that Abu Mutari was there. Abu Bakar, you know, Yahuza. I, I remember yeah. a few of those guys. In Yahuza, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, uh, that, that that was that was a period that uh, you you as a, I always would look back to it and say that wow, that was that was uh, that was fun. Now Even that we were, we were yeah. playing football, we were still mm -hmm. having a good time. Yeah, you, you you guys were famous in Ghana a lot because in the 2004 Olympics, you guys were representing Ghana against that very famous Argentina team. They had Javier Saviola, they mm -hmm. had Andres de Alexandro and, mm -hmm. and the likes. Tell me about what it was like playing against that Argentina team. Um, what, what was it like? Because, oh, was... yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, it, was, uh, it was hard because I, rem I remember uh, that final uh, game that we were playing against Argentina. It was like when you started in the fifth and they were, they were playing home. It's a home... Uh, <laughs> Home team, and if you look at the the fans around, it's like you see only their flags. Once a while, you see maybe in Ghana flag one or two flags that uh, you can see there. But uh, it was tough. We we try our best, but the likes the likes of uh, Adesandro and uh, and Saviola, they really they really uh, killed the game for us. Mm. I mean, um, yeah, they they were they were difficult to play, but. What made them such a special team? You, you've spoken about the atmosphere and the ambience and how intimidating it was. What made that Argentina team special? I, I, I'll, I'll talk about the Ghana team um, after that, but just tell me about what made that Argentina team so difficult because they eventually went on to win the competition. Yeah. Uh, they were playing very, very fast football. It was, it was difficult to, uh, to find your feet during the game because the ball was going very, very fast. Yeah. And uh, they, they had... Uh, uh, Savila, who was, uh, was was very 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 hot during that time, mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of team were chasing him. So they they have they had a good team. So they, the whole squad was good, mm -hmm. and they have an individual like uh, individualist like uh, Savila. That when they work and give it to him, he make magic. So <laughs> so it's a little bit it was a little bit tough. I remember that the uh, Afrani, which Afrani was our coach by then. And uh, all our our tactic meeting, he was. Uh, I remember he was saying, 
to uh, the, the defenders uh, <laughs> that keep her on a Saviola, or Saviola, or Saviola, or <laughs> then he scores anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes players, players are just that good. <laughs> What about your, your squad itself, that under 20 squad? You already mentioned that there was a lot of camaraderie between you guys. You were like a brotherhood. A lot of you guys ended up making it to the Black Stars level. A lot of you guys transitioned to the Black Stars. What, what was so special about your group? Uh, the group was, like I'm, like I'm saying, the, the togetherness, you know, what we, had, what we had in camp. It was... It was uh, it was so good that there was no any, uh, there was no any like, it's like there was no any jealousy in it. It's like if I'm playing and someone sitting at the bench, the person wish me wish me better, wish me luck. And if it's in the other the other hand that he is playing, I'm sitting by the bench. I also wish the person good. So it's like we were cheering ourselves in all. You know, if I'm sitting at the bench or I'm mm -hmm. not wearing just say, it's like we were helping ourselves throughout the tournament mm. and that is what is special was special doing the team and so, so that is why most of us from that team also end up in the uh, the blasters uh, the, the the olympic games and also the blasters mm -hmm. because we we have something uh, unique in them hmm. talk to us about um how would i call it the fact that you were all a talented group most of you went on to have really good careers. Are there any guys within that group who surprised you, perhaps with how much they couldn't make it to the level you thought they would? Was there anybody in that group? Um, I think uh, I will uh, I will I will point point out uh, uh, Razak Ibrahim. I will say mm. uh, Razak Ibrahim was. Uh, was very very good player. He was uh, he was a player that he was so skillful. In the, in when he's playing in the in the midfield, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was not easy to <laughs> to take the ball from him. And uh, he was also playing. Uh, he was he was playing. Uh, actually, I think he played in Empoli. Uh, uh, and of course, you ne you never know what happened. But I, I will not say I was disappointed. But uh, he had the potential mm -hmm. to be the likes like uh, Asian and uh, the Boateng and stuff, but but that is football, you know. Uh, sometimes the hands are not yeah. the same. Some yeah. some will be here and some will be here and some will be here, and that uh, that's how it is. And uh, I would I would just say that uh, I hoped you have you have, you have the come along a long mm. way like the others, but mm. that's mm. that's that is destiny. Mm. I was like, this conversation is getting interesting. Let's take a quick break here um, on the tracker. We are talking to Razak Pimpo, a former Black Stars striker, former Midtjylland striker, uh, all the way from his base in Denmark. When we come back, we'll get into some more national team related issues. Ghana have made it to the World Cup. We'll be picking his thoughts on what he makes of all that. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are talking to former Black Star striker Razak Pimpo. Razak, let's let's get into talk of the national team presently. Um, Ghana played Nigeria in a very in a very tense encounter. First of all, what what did you make of that game against Nigeria? Because you know that Ghana games against Nigeria are always very intense down here. What, what did you make of it when you heard that Ghana will have to play Nigeria over two legs to book a ticket to the World Cup? Uh, actually, if I see if I see the current squad that we had uh, in the in the Nations Cup and the performance that we had there, when when we pull out Nigeria, uh, the, the question came to my head that the the tournament that Nigeria had and the players that they have in the in the comp uh, in the in the in the competition in the world with the leagues that the players are playing, uh, it was a little bit hard to convince me. That 
that we could we could uh, we can we can uh, beat them uh, the two the two games. But what I saw the first uh, the first game against them in uh, in uh, Kumasi, I could I could I could see that the team that we we played the team that we had and how we played over there that already t- uh, tells me that uh, we we could we could uh, we could beat them. Uh, in Nigeria, mm. you you played with Otoado. I mean, as a player, mm. um, are you surprised that he has eventually come this far? I, I think I, w- I will not be surprised because I've uh, I've know I've known Otoado very well, uh, not well, but uh, I know that he has been here coaching the FC Luxembourg in Denmark, and uh, I've had a little bit contact with him, and uh, and the work that he was doing here, uh, and where where he is now and what he have, he have done he have done in uh, Dortmund before mm-hmm. coming to Ghana and I will not say that I'm surprised because he has really learned he has really learned gone gone into details with his football career mm. he has really uh, he has really took the coaching course very serious so when so so when they appointed him to to lead the team and add and the uh, stand coaches like uh, George Boateng, what's it called? Yeah, George Boateng and, and uh, Masi Dramani. Dra- Draman, coach Draman. Sorry, I, I could see, you know, and also this Chris that was uh, also coaching uh, in in, in the England the Premier League. Chris Hutton. I could, yeah, I could see that the, uh, you know, the, the the people around him, the coaches around him, and him being the leader for for the Ghana Blasters. I could see that we could, uh, so we, we can win, we can win these two games because, at the end of the day, it becomes like tactical. How are we going to approach this game tactically? And that's exactly what they did. Mm, mm. Now let's talk about the coaching situation itself with the Black Stars, right? So he was hired on mm. an interim basis as a, as a as a standing manager, and now uh, it looks like a lot of things will have to be done if we want to bring him back. What do you think we should do as a country? Do you think that we should hire Otuado on a permanent basis, or you think that um, we should perhaps look beyond him for for the World Cup and, and and the job itself? I think that uh, I think we should give him the chance. He have done it, and uh, I'm a football player myself, and I know the respect that the players will, will have for him, uh, for 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 him taking them into this qualification to to this World Cup. Mm-hmm. It, it gives it gives some kind of connection between the players and the coach, and when the players are willing to to fight and play for him, he can bring them far. So I think they have started something good, and I think they should keep it and uh, and, and keep moving with it. Hmm. Now to to the World Cup itself, um, we've been drawn against Portugal, we've been drawn mm-hmm. against Uruguay, we've been drawn against South Korea. What do you make of our chances initially before we even get to more details? I think we have a good chance because uh, football is round. Uh, when 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 uh, I was watching the Nations Cup, I would say that uh, when I see uh, countries like uh, uh, Kobos and uh, you know, there's some countries that I remember that when we were playing, when we we're going to meet them, we know that okay, this game is uh, is a walk over. It's not it's not like that anymore. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, so I think Portugal can also sit there and say that okay, we're going to beat Ghana. Yeah, that is a walkover. No, we have a we have a, a good chance in the in the in the group that we are in. We just have to prepare ourselves very well before we go to the to the World Cup, and we can we can surprise the world. Now, one of the one of the hot topics regarding this team and the World Cup is the fact that there are some foreign-born Ghanaian players who are eligible to play. And the debate, I mean, Ghanaians are very divided on this matter. So there are people who think that guys like Callum Hudson Odoi, Mohamed Salisu, and co. should be brought in to strengthen our squad for the World Cup. Some people also think that they didn't participate in the qualifiers and so they didn't sweat for the team, they didn't work hard for the team, so they shouldn't be called up. Where do you stand on this matter? Uh, you know, it's difficult because. At the end of the day, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's about Ghana interest. 
and uh, Ghana going there to put put up a good show that will will tell the world that we are back to where we used to be. Mm. Uh, I think it's okay when someone is doing well in the league to to bring him to the international team because that that is uh, that, that is why also the players who are outside. That is why they are they, they they fighting for their club and they are doing well so that they can get a call for the national team to represent their country, which is very very uh, uh, big for for the for the players. So I don't think that if someone is doing well somewhere, they should they should just uh, ignore him and don't don't bring him to the team because uh, someone played a qualification. This have been all the time. That that have been all the time for for national team. Some play the qualification and qualify. And along the way, some for, some some doesn't that they don't make it to the to mm-hmm. the to the World Cup or whatever. That, that is part of football. Uh, it's all about the, those who are who are in in a good in a good uh, form mm. uh, when the coach is going to uh, select uh, the team to mm-hmm. the to the, to the World Cup. Mm. I remember Uchi Uchi used to tell us uh, in the, in Winnipeg when we were on a 17 that many are calls and uh, few are chosen. That that's football. Mm. Let yeah. me l- let's zone in particularly on the Salisu situation because um, mm. he has been under the spotlight a lot because it looks mm. like close to four different head coaches have visited him and he still doesn't seem too mm. convinced about playing for Ghana. Um, why? Why do I mean? You, you obviously don't know his situation, but if you could give advice to mm. young Mohamed Salisu, what would you tell him regarding uh, his national team? Um, Playing for the national team generally, what would you tell him? I think I would tell him to uh, to to go play for a national team because uh, national team, even though you're playing for club side, uh, national team is, is different. You know, <laughs> that is that is you representing your country. Mm-hmm. It's not you don't you know it's not like you representing your club, and uh, and the country that uh, gives you. The, the chance why why when you were a kid it's always it was always good to go back to 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 give something back to the country so I, my advice was will said will, will be that you should go back and play for the for the country because the, that that will that is a that is a big respect mm. you get a big respect from the Ghanaians that uh, is also trying to help mm. together with the players to, uh, for Ghana flag to be raised in the world Let's talk about your own time uh, with Ghana at the World Cup. You were part of our very first group that made it to the World Cup. That obviously was very historic. Um, we also know that it wasn't smooth sailing all the way through. But if you look at the issues that you people had before camp, over bonuses, all the type of stuff that usually involve, um, I mean, swell around the national team, what kind of advice can you give us? as we are heading into this World Cup in Qatar, in terms of us doing well, what should we avoid? What should we be looking to do? What should we not be doing? I think uh, I think the most important is that we, we will have a very good, uh, a very good uh, campaign, you know, p- preparing. We have, we have to have very good pre- preparation mm-hmm. for the World Cup. Uh, and also avoid all these small, small conflicts that would not benefit the team. We should try to avoid them and let let the players focus on what they are good at. Give them what what they need. Give them uh, more the motivation. Mm-hmm. The whole nation have to uh, support them because when the whole nation, if the players body can feel that the whole the whole nation is behind them and uh, uh, they are doing everything for them to to uh, to motivate them to 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 go to the World Cup to to give all their best, then they will go there with peace and uh, go do their job. What is that is what that is what is necessary. Mm. Again, you yourself came on as a substitute in the World Cup. Mm. I remember and immediately won Ghana a penalty. Walk walk mm. me through that moment again. I mean, getting a chance to come onto a wall into a World Cup game, immediately winning a penalty. Talk me through how you were feeling at the time and how you feel now when you look back on that moment. 
I think that uh, you are a little bit mistaken because I started that game against uh, the, US. the United States. Okay. Was, uh, yeah, I was substitute some of the games and uh, I got a chance to start against the uh, US. And uh, that that was, you know, that, that when you start the game, it's different than coming in. And I remember when I was uh, when they were playing the national anthem, uh, doing before the game, I was standing there and have my hand on my chest and uh, knowing knowing that I have the whole uh, nation behind me to go in and, and uh, do my best to uh, to win this game and and to make a penalty uh, for appear to convert it. It, it, it was it was. I mean, it was it was something that I always would look back to and uh, know that I also contributed a little bit uh, when I got my chance to to represent the national team in the world class. Hmm. Now, I mean, for somebody who played under seventeen, under twenty, and eventually got to the Black Stars, for me, hmm. I think that for somebody who had been playing professionally as long as you had, you didn't play long enough, or you didn't make enough appearances in the Black Stars. What would you attribute that to? Uh, I didn't make enough uh, appearances in the Black Stars because uh, after the World Cup, when I came back to um, when I came back to Major Land, FC Copenhagen, oh, yeah. I was, you, I was you went to Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went to Copenhagen. After the World Cup, uh, it's like the uh, Copenhagen bought a player who used to play in uh, Chelsea, was called Jesper Gonkia. I remember him. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They bought, they brought him to the the position that I was playing, and and he, he came straight from Chelsea to Copenhagen. So he he seated on my position where I have to play it, and I did everything to be able to win the position back, but I could not. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't get the position back. So I moved on to uh, to Viking, and of course, again, like you are saying that. Uh, some players say that uh, they have qualified. Uh, you know, some people will say that the players who have qualified, the team, mm -hmm. uh, they, is them who have to go represent the, uh, the same uh, country for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. It's all depends on your on your uh, the performance. You know, with the performance is going down and uh, you are not playing the same like you used to play, and someone is doing well somewhere, then, then of course, is is that's how football is. I, I had my chance, and uh, when when uh, when it was going, when when things was not going well for me, when I was going down, then someone also got the chance, and that's football. Hmm. So that's, I, will, I will not say hmm. I will not say that nothing about it. <laughs> that's that's very well spoken. Let's talk about what you are doing now, and what some of your colleagues are doing now. Now I realize that, like you said, you are you've gotten into coaching kids now, like Kingston works with Right to Dream now, hmm. also coaching kids. Um, Michael yeah. Essien also yeah. uh, is, at, is at North Zealand now uh, doing his own thing with coaching. Derek mm -hmm. Boateng is also coaching. What's with your group and getting into coaching? What, what's so special about your group that all of you actually wanted to get into coaching afterwards? I think uh, we had a, we had a good coaches around us when we were playing. And uh, what we have learned from our coaches, we also want to give it uh, the good experience that we had. We want to give it to the young ones that are coming. So I will not be surprised that uh, I will see ACN maybe coaching on a 71 day in Ghana or maybe like AKC taking on a 20 uh, team in Ghana because uh, we, have, we, have, we have been there, we have tried it ourselves, we know what it takes uh, to, to make it happen. So uh, I'm happy that they have also chose to, mm -hmm. to, to get into the coaching and uh, give the experience uh, uh, to, to, the, to the young ones that are coming. Mm. Is there ever a chance that we'll see Razak Pimpo also accepting to coach the under 17 and the 20s of Ghana? Time, time will tell. I would, that, that is destiny. If the destiny says that's what it's going to be, it will be. But <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure that sometimes you, you would love to make deliberate moves or you're, you're going to leave that to destiny. Yeah, I will leave that to destiny. Yeah. <laughs> What surprised me recently, I mean, was seeing Sule Muntari come back and play for Accra Hearts of Folk. How did you feel mm. when you first heard that news? How, like, how, how, how did you receive that news? I think, I, I think it was very good for Sule to come back and play 
uh, that that I've also, I've also said that I've, I've, I've commented on it that that is very good for those who are also play now that they, they can see that their career is going down that they cannot they cannot make it that in Europe anymore that uh, maybe if that's what they want if that's what they want they can also come back and play the league to uh, to help the young ones who are in the league because the young ones will look up to them and uh, and learn from them and that will also benefit the, the league mm. now I mean, is he the kind of person you see also possibly becoming a coach? Or from how you know him, you probably think that after playing, he'll, he'll want to retire and live a peaceful life? I think, uh, you know, Sule is a very special uh, player, a special person. Uh, he can go both ways. He can be that uh, he thinks that, uh, okay, what they have experienced uh, in football, he would like to give it to the young ones, uh, which will be very, very good. So I hope that uh, he will you will consider uh, being being a coach one day because that would also benefit the, the young ones that are coming. Now, I nearly forgot, but, you know, Uruguay and Ghana have formed a very special football bond because of mm -hmm. what happened at the 2010 World Cup. A lot of Ghanaians say that we've waited 12 long years to get our revenge and all that. Do you think that is the, the right approach to take into that game? I mean, the players are not the, the people of Ghana, but... One, how do you think the players will be feeling heading into that game or getting a second chance to play? And what do you think our approach should be to that game? Uh, I think that uh, one of my friends was telling me that uh, that game was called, someone have named it that uh, Uruguay Part 2. <laughs> Uruguay Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that <laughs> I think I think that they have to just uh, concentrate in that game. That game means a lot for the Ghanaians, uh, not only in Ghana but the mm -hmm. whole world. So what happened? And um, if 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 anyone who's, who's win that game, that should be should be in Ghana. It should, should be Ghana who have to win that game. So they have to they have to actually take that game extra extra serious uh, to approach it. I mean. As a, as a footballer, doesn't that become counterproductive sometimes when you are obsessed with getting revenge against a certain team? Wouldn't that actually end up hindering how you play because you are too focused on revenge and sometimes you forget what to do during the game? Uh, but uh, it's right. It's right. That's also, some, that's also why the, you see some of the players when they are going to Champions League games, they have uh, earpiece in their ears and listen to music and... Uh, trying to get a little bit the focus from too much what mm -hmm. they have to do. Uh, so in this way, of course, they will, uh, they will be prepared. Even though that we'll be talking a lot about it, they will, they will prepare very well before the game. Mm. Let's talk about your, your club career for a bit, right? Mm -hmm. I realize that you spent basically all your time in Scandinavia. Why? Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, I made, I made every, everyone have, uh, where and uh, where he, uh, you know, he he, ma he make it. My was uh, when I came to Midland, I did it very well. And uh, and while I was here, I made some uh, good networks. Uh, while I'm here, and again, like I told you, that uh, I didn't have education, proper education that uh, I could I could I could fall back on when I finished my career. So I put all my effort to uh, to be able to play. Of course, well finished and, uh, and established here, yeah. and that's why I'm here. Which of the clubs was your favorite? Because I, I realized that you spent six years at Midland. Um, which of the teams did you enjoy playing for the most? Uh, when I play, when I came to Midland, is like a Midland is like a it's like a home for me. You know, I uh, and I, I I live where I live now is like only uh, forty five minutes from Midland. So I visit, I visit the stadium st uh, still and uh, watch their games and follow them still. Uh, Midland was, um, like I said, was a family for me. They 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 uh, lend me everything about European football. Uh, they 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 taught me everything, and uh, that will not uh, that will have it in me all the time. Hmm. Um, I had this, uh, five years in Midland, and I went to Copenhagen. Copenhagen is a different club. Yeah. Copenhagen was a, was a was a big club by then, uh, which was very good. But right now the table have turned also. Uh, 
uh, in Denmark that now Midland is more the, the big club now mm -hmm. than uh, than Copenhagen. So uh, I would say, of course, the the both team I I have enjoyed playing there, and uh, I still have contact with to the both team. Mm. Tell me about one football match that lives in your mind, like. I'm sorry, in your career, you played a lot of games, scored a lot of goals. Mm. What's your most memorable football game? I would say that that was the World Cup against, uh, against uh, US. Mm, that was your most memorable game as a football. Why? Yeah. Why? It's because uh, it, was, it, was, it was special. You know, it was for my country. And uh, it's not a lot of football players who, uh, who experienced World Cup. And, and being there and, um, uh, you know, taking part of it and uh, made, made impact to, uh, for Ghana to be able to, uh, to, to move to the next stage. That, 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 that's also something that mm. will always be on my number one list. Mm. Now, I, I remember that during the 206 World Cup, there were some Ghanaians who were saying that Pimpon hadn't scored enough goals. Why are you taking him to the World Cup? And, and you, you, you are on record to have said that you are a scorer of important goals. Um, was that your mindset yeah. <laughs> during, during the tournament itself? Yeah, yeah, it was. It's like, uh, like you were saying that, uh, you know, there was there will always will be uh, people who will be saying that he doesn't score, why is he going and all this, you know. But uh, it's different how coaches, they see, they see their players. Uh, it's, you know, if I take someone like a, like a Jordan, I can see that I, I, Jordan. I, I, I was just been... about to come. I was just about to come yeah. to him. Yeah. Yeah. T no, talk talk yeah. to me about him. You're, you're, uh, you're making a point. Uh, I, I I can see uh, people have been also talking a lot about Jordan, and uh, they want him out from the team and all this. But maybe what he he does, what I remember my. Days, what the power that I put on the game, maybe it will not be me who's going to score, but maybe I will, I will put the power to make something easy for some someone else to score. Mm. And sometimes you also need that in the squad. Some will have to do the dirty work and some will have to uh, score. That is football. Mm. Does Jordan remind you of yourself? In a way. <laughs> well, I, I see your Black Stars jersey hanging uh, in the background. Um, would definitely love to see it at, yeah. at closer range, but just tell me about how, I mean, your 206 and 210 squads had star power in the team. Um, when you look at this, our team, what do you think will work for us? How do you feel about mm. the quality in this Ghana team going to the World Cup? And what do you think will be our biggest strength that we will probably need to build on? I think uh, if you take our, our time, that was the first time. Uh, and and we went through the semi-finals we made by Zed, we went out. When we went to the 2010 World Cup, we were close to come to the semi-finals. So in, in a way, there's, a, there's a, a big expectation for us that the next one that we come into the world again, we have to come and put a good show for people to see that, okay, this team were, were mixed. So like I said to you, the scouting system uh, the preparation towards this this uh, this World Cup would uh, would would would, would uh, benefit you know to show where which way we're gonna go during the World Cup. Mm, mm. Razak, um, it's been absolutely amazing um, talking to you. Like I said, I see the old mm. ping pong Jesse hanging in the background. Nineteen, <laughs> very proud. Thank thank you for for making time to speak to us. Hopefully, uh, some other time we can catch up again. So you heard former Black Star striker Razak Pimpong getting to us all the way from his base in Denmark, talking about basically everything, local football, uh, time in Denmark, and Ghana's World Cup squad. I've been educated. Um, I've enjoyed the conversation as well. I hope you at home have enjoyed it as well. Same time, the tracker will be back 